Hello, Isaac. Rafa, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. What an exciting time. Today, right. today's a momentous day, right? It's yes, the day it that John meets Jesus, our uh -huh. two favorite Jays. Uh -huh. They go and they, they finally have a conversation. And uh, we'll, we'll have to see about why what's taking place. So let's jump right into it. So verses 13 and 14, maybe let's, um, okay. The gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 onwards. Then Jesus came from Galilee to, to the Jordan to John to be baptized by John. John would have prevented John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? Okay, so Maybe, I, I is there's that a lot to say on 14 and less on 13. Yeah. So let's, 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 let's work at 13 for a little bit. Um, so Jesus, where was he right now? He's in Nazareth. That's where we assume he was. Um, and if anything, on Mark, the, the Markian parallel says, in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee. And if anything, it's it's a little surprising that it says Galilee and not Nazareth. Uh, if anything, uh, what I would assume is that the people who this is written for, the word Nazareth as a geographical location would be less important. Because it does look like from my perspective that Nazareth was edited out here and originally probably did say Nazareth. And what that means is like, again, like I'm not sure where Matthew is written, but I think we think somewhere, somewhere north of Syria, somewhere near Turkey um, for the Jewish community there. But wherever it was, it probably shows, this one line shows that Israeli or, or Judean geography or Galilean geography was not one of the fortes of this book. Because don't forget, the way that we're using Nazareth, I told you itself was showing a lack of understanding of Hebrew, how there's a Nazar and a Natsar, what we say in English as a ZZ, pizza. Mm -hmm. And that sound doesn't exist in, uh, they're very different sounds in Hebrew, the Tz and the yeah. Zuh. So I think uh -huh. the very fact Nazareth, there was always like a misunderstanding of Nazareth, at least uh, underlying this. And the only way that the drush or the homolytic interpretation could existed is if you literally weren't able very easily to differentiate between a za and a tsa, which I think Americans sometimes can't, by the way. Just, you know, it's like, if you tell an American, how do you spell pizza? And you're not allowed to say ZZ, what would they say? Pizza, I, I don't know how you spell. <laughs> Usually when I transliterate a Hebrew, I'll do TZ. But, um, okay, what would you like to say? Yeah, so uh, thank you for that observation. I probably missed that earlier. So if the author was not well-versed in, the, in, in, in he, the Hebrew language and the, nuance, and the nuances, so, so you're saying so the author might not have been Jewish then? And because, but, no, because, no, no, by, no, so, because by being Jewish, right, this author would have been well-versed. So you're saying that this author was Jew, the author could have been Jewish, but he wasn't well-versed in Jewish in Jewish. Uh, uh, or in, I, yeah, I'm going to go on the limb and say 100% the author is Jewish. Yeah. But as we know from the Egyptian communities and we know from the Northern Syrian communities, just because you have to be Jewish does not mean you know Hebrew. Somewhat of the lingo Franco of the world at that time was Aramaic. And Aramaic does have a lot of parallels to Hebrew, it's possible. But we see a lot of the interpretations, which we could see this by looking at the, the Septuagint parallels, which we're not doing. But we, we could see that a lot of the homiletic interpretations are cut from the Greek. And as we know, Matthew, you know, the, the, again, like, I don't know how it was originally written, but like, we, we know that the Matthew we have today is in Greek, even though I, I do see on YouTube, there's like a translation into, into Hebrew or Aramaic, but the, the drushas, which mean the homiletic interpretations, the ones that we're taking the verses from, it's not from the Hebrew usually. It's usually from a Hebrew translation into Greek. And, and I think this, this, this idea of them not having a full familiarity with the geography of Judea slash Israel, as well as a full understanding of the Hebrew language kind of underlies this, which is fine. As a Christian, you know, I look at you, Isaac, I don't say, Isaac, tell, tell me, you know what Jesus' name in Hebrew is? The answer is so, some people do, some people don't. You, you, you know what, Yeshiva, Yeshua, right? Yeshua. Yeah, pretty, pretty close. Uh, so, and John, you know, the, these things are, you know, John, like, again, like, I, I feel like as a Christian, who cares uh, what, what their original names were? Yeah. Um, so I, I don't, this doesn't bother me, but I feel like this line in Matthew, the underlying concept is that really Nazareth yeah. is edited out because Nazareth doesn't matter here. Nazareth is only important for the biblical pro 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 prophecy fulfillment. Prophecy. Now, that, now that we got that check over that, it, it's a meaningless thing now. What struck me was it's so abrupt, right? Like the earlier uh -huh. was, was, you know, it 
you know, like when you start looking at this verse by verse, if you read this as a whole, it's fine, but um, it's like, wow, it's very abrupt as in, like, this is not typical writing, right? Like, or was this the way people wrote back then where yeah. the sentences were so abrupt, like, this, I, I wasn't going to go into this, but I'll be, so, so I was reading something separately yesterday. I was reading an article about the, right now in the, the you know, those weekly portions that uh, Jews read for, yeah. for each week. And right now they're, they're going into like the, it's the story of Exodus just started yeah. uh, this week. And one of the things. In, in fact, I, I got an email yesterday morning saying, can, could Pharaoh have repented? It's from the daily readings in the Jewish Bible. And I said, wow, that's, we should, be, anyway, go ahead. But, well, the question, could he have repented? Is it even if God hardened his fault? Is it even his, is, if God's literally making that you can't repent on the spot, whose fault is that? Lots mm -hmm. of famous questions. We'll leave that to the medieval philosophers. But one, one thing I noticed some person wrote, uh, so a lot of people believe that uh, the, the Genesis and, 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 uh, and, and names, I don't know if they're English, the Exodus, mm -hmm. are, are, are somewhat like uh, independent, I know the Hebrew, I don't know English, are, are somewhat uh, <laughs> independent, I'm like, what is it? The word, in, in, the word shmos means names. So I'm like, names? No, that's not what it's called. I know it's like called names. Mm -hmm. Okay, Exodus. So what we see is this, crazy transition so there's so much literature written about this the the talmud talks about it where it just says generation died mm -hmm. joseph died new king everyone slaves mm -hmm. it happens like in three verses and you're like what just happened mm -hmm. and, and and a lot and you know from uh biblical uh, criticism perspective they'll talk about how you know that that would be an editor's note and from a jewish perspective it just uh, you know, sorry, Jerry, that's, I shouldn't say that. and from a more a religious orthodox perspective it really is coming to show you how how things could change rather quickly and how they change is not as important as the realities that the the israelites have to deal with but it's really interesting it's just like hundred new king new thing they, they, the whole story of genesis is building up to um, they're slaves so I, let me it, let me make yeah, sure so, yeah so uh, is this what you're saying are you saying that 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 reality can change at an instant and this was the belief and that belief that reality can change I, in an instant is, is being reflected in their I mean, it's being reflected in their writing as in is that i what you're think saying? that you have a you have a feeling and that feeling is that something took place here that doesn't jive with the rest of the text and you are 100 correct Anyone who looks at this, the first thing they're going to notice is that number one, this is happening way too quickly. Number two, you're going to notice is that in Mark and Luke, there's no mention of this. So any, I think, academic would look at this text right here and say, this was added. <laughs> this what was in order to justify why, why Jesus is going to John. Or this is in order to explain, like there, 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 there's a story behind why the, the, the other verses, there's no necessary story. There's like, we're getting the story out. Over here, it's someone I feel looking at the, the verses in front of them and saying, this is weird. And, and, that's what, and that's what you feel in your gut right now. And I think anyone who reads this and is able to take Matthew seriously is always going to feel that feeling that you feel right now. So Baruch Hashem, you're feeling the right feeling. Okay, but, but, but then to, your earlier, to my earlier question, like were you saying that People believe that 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 history or reality can change instantaneously, and the, and the writing here is also a reflection of that form of belief. Well, so, I'm just, I was so, thinking that from the the Exodus perspective, that perspective. you know, uh, I think we all agree that uh, you know the people of any place where a volcano went off understand that your lives could change in an instance. All the people who were by the Dead Sea and their city was overturned by Sodom and Gomorrah, we understand that uh, anything could change in an instance. Uh, anyone was hit by a car. So that's not the question. Um, I, I feel that it's not about an instance. It's more about the linking the two pieces in this situation. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anyway, so uh, Jesus came from Galilee, which we knew, to John at the Jordan. So it's really interesting. Um, what is clear is that just like the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to John at the Jordan, Jesus comes. So it's yeah. really, you could actually now lump Jesus in this one instance only with the Pharisees and Sadducees from the Matthew community, that, that he was a charismatic leader. People believed in him. He was, you know, a prophet from certain perspectives, a good guy. And people from not only from Jerusalem, which is immediately uh, west of where this is in Dead Sea. So um, this is the, the, the traditional spot is a place called al Maktas. Just based on Hara, based Evra, in uh, in in uh, on the Jordan side. So this would have been immediately east of Jerusalem, but way south of the Galilee. Yeah, so but here's yeah, that's a good point. But here's 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 where they differ, right? 
like it says very clearly or at least the, the, the evangelist says jesus came to him to be baptized by him as in laying out his laying out his intentions but when we spoke about the pharisees and sadducees in the earlier section um again the intentions were vague right it's not clear the well, coming well, to his coming out. to his baptism in three coming, seven, we get the intentions though. No, yeah, coming <laughs> coming to his baptism. Coming to his baptism, it could mean they come to see, do they come to protect, do they come to learn more? Do they, and so, but in a, the, the intentions aren't very clear. It's a bit vague, and so we had to fill in the gaps. But hey, I, I'm not sure I agree. I, I feel that like you're making a differentiation. You're saying three seven is inherently different than three thirteen. So three seven says, but yeah. when he he saw many Pharisees coming for his baptism, he said, oh. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, coming to his baptism. That's right. So they were coming to his baptism. Uh huh. And, and over here it says mm -hmm. um, he came to be baptized. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you by him. Yeah. So you're. I'm not sure. I see a difference. What's the difference you're trying to claim? So the, so here right in this in thirteen the evangelist the evangelist wants us to he he's articulating Jesus' intention that he wanted to be baptized by him. But there they came to his baptism, and so so when it, they came, people came, but it's not clear if they came to be baptized by him to begin with, or if they came with it with the intention of to you know to make you know again to. Um, you know, to argue or make fun or condescend or something else, right? And we are forced to fill in the gaps. Maybe this, maybe that. Maybe some of them came there to do this thing. But here he's up front and said that Jesus came and his 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 stated his stated his stated intention was to be baptized by him. So, so I hear you're saying, and I like the differentiation you're making. Uh, I think we'd have to look closely at the words. I'm looking at the Greek, like I, this is obviously all Greek translation, but I'm looking at another translation and it's hard. It's hard to see because number one, um, one is coming first person out of Jesus's mouth and the other one's coming second person out of uh, John's mouth. So, you know, he, in, in one translation it says they're, they're coming to the baptism and over here he says, I came to be baptized. So uh, I'm not sure. I, I, would feel, I would feel more comfortable lumping them together because it's cool. To say that they're, they're, they're doing a very similar thing, but I understand why you want to, to differentiate. So, okay. so, so we have three kinds of people. We have the people who came to John to be repent, to be baptized by him, as and to be immersed in the thing, and then we have the Pharisees and Sadducees who came to him because they came to his baptism, right? At least that's what John says. And then we have Jesus, who who who's here has come with with, with the stated intention to be baptized, to be baptized by him. I'm not sure. I, I hear I hear your differentiation, but but I'm not sure I'm gonna. I'm gonna okay, come that's right. Wagon. So the yeah. reason why uh, the reason why I mentioned that is because you know it kind of struck me when I read verse 14. I I read verse 14 earlier, but I didn't notice that because here he goes. He, he's he, here. It sounds like he's saying John would have because he doesn't know what John said. The evangelist says, at least my version says, John would have prevented him by saying, "I need to be baptized by you," and why do you come to me? It doesn't say that, that John said this, but saying more okay. saying he might have said this, he might not in have another, said this. Again, in another translation, it says, but John tried to deter him, saying. Mm -hmm. So again, like I feel like tried to deter him is the opposite of what you're saying, right? One is an action, right. another yeah. one, another one that you're saying is a, a thought process. So yeah. again, like I, I wouldn't be so meticulous in differentiating them just because I'm not sure which one's better. In the translation doesn't doesn't it make a difference like one is right like you know i mean they both have different they both have two completely different meanings yeah yeah 100 percent. so so 100 percent. but the, the most important point though we could say is that john is like what the hell why right. are you doing this jesus and i need to be baptized to you so for let's let's break this down and not just say he's being humble and you're coming why do, let's imagine he mean, meant means it literally why does john feel that he has to be it would be better if he was baptized by Jesus. And again, it says, I need to be baptized you in both my translations, meaning that it could be, I am not even the bat, like John the Baptist is not then, yet the Baptist yet. Yeah, but then even before we go that, how does John know that this is the, the Jesus is Jesus? Oh, look at you, look at you. No, uh, okay, see, because there's, there is no indication that like, how does John know that this is the person? You know, the evangelist we're, we're, just we're says, given no indication of how he would know. Yeah, that's right. All we know is from his preaching that he says, even when he gives a preaching, he never says Jesus by name. He says some guy is going to come. Yeah. So, how does, so, yeah. so here it sounds like he has some confidence to say this uh, goes like how, like how do you, I mean, um, like 
I can't imagine John not looking for confirmation because this is making a public statement, and you know, so, um, and this is something he's been waiting for all his lifetime. Like he, maybe, that's maybe, his... maybe the answer is that's why it's not in Mark. Mark just says he came and he got baptized by John, and that's the end of the story. And and Matthew is where we have this connection, and I think your connection is, is, is your question is so strong. How? What? Who? You know, it, it doesn't make sense. When a Messiah comes up to you, it's really hard to know he's a Messiah unless he's glowing, right? But you have to know, the point is he, like you have, like he should have had some confirmation to know that this is a person, but but we don't have any indication of that. Now, Jesus and John were related, right, by, by Mary and Elizabeth. So they, you know, they've probably grown up together. They've, they've known each other, but it's one thing to know a person and another thing to know, like for the John to know. Is, again, like the simple answer to your question is that if you read a couple more verses, there, there's divine intervention, and, and that's all you know. And then we, we don't need him to know anything right now. But if you just read Matthew, uh, you have to argue, as you're saying, that, that he had some divine insight or Holy Spirit insight into the fact that Jesus was the guy who should be baptizing. Mm -hmm. uh, again, like it, it really goes into a fundamental question of what does baptism mean for John? When he says in Matthew... I need to be baptized by you. Um, does that mean that he is like, let's imagine baptism is a, uh, a concept. Does that mean that John doesn't feel that he was baptized? What does this even mean? I need to be baptized you. Cause we yeah. keep doing it as a symbolic process, mm -hmm. but even as symbolic process, like it's, I, I don't know how to read this. <laughs> how do, why would he ever need to be baptized by him? Or even does, does John need a different, like let me put it in different terms. Does John need a, a higher belief in the kingdom of heaven? Isn't John team Jesus already? Isn't John baptized enough? What, what additional symbolic meaning or even metaphysical meaning could he have to getting baptized by Jesus? Like, I just don't see what it adds. Okay, so okay, so the question becomes so. You, so the question, the question is, why does John feel the need to? So what is John lacking, or what do you think that he's lacking that he wants to be baptized by this other person? Unless you want to say, unless you want to say it's rhetorical, you want me to baptize you. So I is it? You yeah, but okay, you? So, I should be baptized by you myself. Okay, so this goes back to my earlier question, right? So, so um, did John view the Messiah as being metaphysically different? Right? He's a human being. And because he says somebody more mightier than I am, and we discussed this a couple, couple of days ago, like what does this mightier mean? You know, a, a, could it mean prophet? And so it's, could it mean this? But but is this a reflection of John's view that Jesus was somebody metaphysically different than him? He had a physical body, but did he view that way? And from that, from that perspective saying, I need to be baptized by you, this hired being, but why do you come to me that, um, why do you come to me? Again, this is me again, post asking, asking a question, trying to, you know, trying to make, trying to get a, trying to wrap my arms around John's view of Jesus at, you know, in this, uh, in verse 13, 13 and 14. Um, so I, 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 you know, there, there's a quote from a theologian. I, I'll read, I'll, I'll read it to you. And you can tell me if this helps, but I'm not sure it does. Uh, he says, not in personal feeling of sinfulness, not even because he, through his connection of responsibility with the unclean people, was unclean according to Levitical law, or because he believed that he was obliged to regard the collective guilt of the nation as his guilt, just as little in order to separate himself inwardly from the sins of the nation or make it certain that his Greek, uh, I don't know what this word means, Greek something, <laughs> Sarx Asthena, should not be opposed to the life of the Holy Spirit, blah, 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 blah. Um, the, the baptism was symbolic beginning of his announcement of himself. And at the same time, a okay. recognition of John's mission. Um, it, again, it's it, it, again, like, unless so you're something like that, it's hard to understand. Is that, is it talking about, is it talking about John's baptism as in what he was, is what he was doing or is, is that could a be, reference? Yeah, it, it just gave me a bunch of examples. It could be that he's already trying to baptize because of guilt. It could be because he's trying to see John as a, the forebear and this kind of gives John importance. It could be that, um, again, there's just so many guesses, but the, the reason the guesses are so so wide, right, because it's only Matthew this exists because it, 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 I, I think the easiest thing to say is that it's rhetorical. You want to baptize me? I want to baptize you. Like, it, it's very hard to understand how it could be helpful to uh, Jesus. I need to be baptized by you and you come to me it's 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 like a guest. It's it's hard to understand. Yeah, it, it, 
it's pr probably because we don't again the 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 evangelist doesn't fill the details as to as to what does john think of jesus all we have is this question which in the face of it it doesn't make like what is this you know why this question um um it's really interesting, um, even the difference between Luke and Mark and Matthew. And Luke makes it sound like when uh, Luke in, was it 30 and 321. Now, when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized, he was praying. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. it's, Luke answers your question. There is nothing special about Jesus before this moment. There's no way John could have guessed it. And really, only during the baptism where John was doing his thing, the heavenly intervention took place and it became clear. So I think Luke really answers all your questions and we have no questions according to Luke. And that's why I think we have to say it's rhetorical according to- uh, Yeah, because it says, yeah, I, I think that's a good way to look at it because it says John would have prevented him. So again, he, so the question, I think the, the, the answer is probably there in verse 14, right? If John would have, it's saying that to your point, it's more rhetorical. It sets him up to say, this is what might have, or this is what he might have said to prove the larger point that, um, <clears throat> Yeah, and uh, again, I think yeah. the Matthew community were just trying to explain this really, like, again, I don't know if the right word is embarrassing or awkward idea of Jesus getting baptized by someone. If anything, it sounds, it sounds like if you don't know much about Christianity and you just heard this one line, it's offensive. It, it, it's, it's, it, it's crazy. Oh. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised at these verses, right? They make these jumps, some jump. It's it's a bit abrupt, like without any background. Like if I if I if I'm reading this for the very first time without any Christian theology, I'll probably go, "What is this? What is this going? Like what what exactly is he talking? And why these really abrupt uh, seismic jumps from one from one verse to the other?" Um, yeah, I hear. But this fits with the overall trend of of John of Matt, what we've seen about John so far, where he, he's a conundrum, things he says and does. Uh, aren't exactly clear. I mean, he's doing something, but what exactly it means and 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 how they all fit. I mean, it does raise it does raise you know obvious questions uh, of uh, who he is and and what exactly he's trying to do and 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 what his words and actions mean. Agreed. Okay, Isaac. I think we'll we'll call it a day. Um, we're almost done. Are we almost done with the chapter? Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting closer to the chapter. Mm -hmm. um, we get we get to hear uh, finally Jesus. Our, our, tomorrow we'll get to hear the first time Jesus speaks. So that's exciting. That's exciting. Okay. I was I was wondering what his voice sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Rabbi, on that note, thank you, and and have a great day. Bye.